Hi guys, I just wanted to say, uh, we're going to start off in the book of Galatians. We're going to skip from Corinthians to Galatians because I was doing my own studying like I always do every day. And I was in Galatians and uh, it's just, it explains Jesus and what he did for us. Really good and there's a lot of Christians that are confused and they're condemned and condemning themselves. A lot of people under the law when we're not under the law of sin anymore. Okay, yeah, we're supposed to follow God's commandments, but we aren't saved from either following them or breaking them. We are saved through the faith of what Jesus did for us. So it's good to follow the commandments. It's bad to break them, but you're still going to be saved if you have faith in Jesus Christ. But you will have to answer for everything we've done in our life, whether you're saved or not. Okay, Galatians. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the, this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. This is what I'm talking about. A lot of people are confused. And it's going to explain it really good in this book. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men, for do I now persuade men, or God, question mark, or do I seek to please men, question mark, for if I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in past times in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So he lived under the law. But he persecuted the Jews. He was a Roman. He's a G so. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, He knew from the beginning time before He was even created what His journey was going to be. He was going to persecute and kill a lot of Jews, and then God was going to call him later in life to with grace, which is a free gift for, that Jesus earned him with his blood and uh he was going to call him to do his own will and it, later on in the book he tells him how much he's got to suffer for god's name jesus's name's sake so he he pretty much has to make up for it uh, and he does really hardly okay but he loves it he he is not ashamed to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the heathen which is gentiles anybody that's not jewish Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which are apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. So he went all over the place preaching the word of God for three years, and then he finally went and seen Peter, one of the disciples, twelve disciples, in Jerusalem, and this is what happened, and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother, Jesus' earthly brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterward I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only 
that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorify God in me. All right, chapter 2. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my throat hurts bad. That's why I study with an audio Bible. You can download it, King James Audio Bible, on the Google Play app. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, one of his apostles, and took Titus with me also, another apostle, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, which is a Gentile, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Now listen. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. The truth, not the false stuff they're trying to preach. But of those who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrary-wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto the disciple Peter. Peter was a Jew. Paul is a Gentile, one of us. We have a different law than the Jews do, and he's explaining it. For he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, there's circumcision covenant, and then there's uncircumcision covenant. The same was mighty in me to, toward the Gentiles. For he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles, us. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, James, Cephas, and John, who they were all disciples from Jesus' day, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas, another apostle, the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen, which is Gentiles, and they unto the circumcision, which is the Jews. So the disciples are going on to the Jews, and the apostles, which are Gentiles, are going on to the Gentiles. And they're preaching all about Christ, but in different ways. Okay, and it's going to explain it. Only they... That we should remember the poor, the same which I was also was forwarded to do. But when Peter came, was came, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before the certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So, when James, one of the disciples, when he was around the Gentiles, he would act, treat them good as, as he would his fellow brothers. And then when some of the disciples, which are Jews, came around and seen him talking to the Gentiles, he withdrew himself because he was ashamed of it because of the, the law and circum the law of circumcision that the Jews teach, which is not the same law unto the Gentiles, because Jesus Christ came and died on the cross and was the end of the law. And they and they don't they don't get that through their head all the way. And the other Jews dissem dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. So they're pushing the Gentiles away. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, Before them all, If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as, the do, as do the Jews? Why are you telling them to live like you if you don't even live like them unless they're around? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, 
knowing that a man is not justified by his by the works of the law, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, having faith in Jesus and what he did for us. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be saved or justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is there Christ? Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? No, God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me spiritually. He's the head of our body. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is, a, is dead in vain. Chapter 3. Hold on, I want to pray. Because the devil's starting to mess with my mind span and not let me concentrate. Dear Father, I pray and ask that you please help me you speak through me with the Holy Spirit, Lord, the words and the knowledge and understanding so I can deliver this message to them. And let their spiritual eyes and ears be opened also, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let them receive the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you? Question mark. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, by doing works in the, of the law, following the commandments and doing what the law tells you to do? Or by the hearing of faith, believing that Jesus died on the cross and was raised again. You, When you receive Jesus Christ in your heart, you receive the Holy Spirit. You're baptized and be baptized, not by doing the works of the law. Are you so foolish, having begun in spirit? Are you so foolish, question mark, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, question mark, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he do it by the works of the law? Is he healing people and praying for people and putting hands on people and they receive the Holy Spirit by doing works of the law? Or by hearing the hearing of faith, having faith that the things he's doing will work. He, when he prays for someone, he's having faith it will heal them. When he's just using faith for anything, and it's not by doing works. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, while he was still uncircumcised, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, which is the uncircumcision, is the Gentiles, which is anybody who's not Jewish. They're the uncircumcision, plus they're called Gentiles. The same are the children of Abraham. Because of what he did before he was circumcised. Having faith that God wanted him to do it. In the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen. Which is also the Gentiles. The heathen, the uncircumcision, the Gentiles. They're all the same. Which is anybody who's not Jew. Through faith. Foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying. In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be the, of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith in Jesus Christ, believing he can save us no matter what. 
as long as you believe in his name. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth the law shall live in the law. And when you break the law, sin arises, and then the wages of sin is death. So it's a never-ending circle. You break the law, sin arises, you ask for forgiveness, and you accidentally break the law because of how weak we are in the flesh. You can't help it. It's the flesh. Warring against the, the law of our mind, which is faith in Jesus Christ. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, which is a cross. That the blessing of Abraham might come from the gent that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith in Jesus. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth dis or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not in two seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, then serveth the law? Question mark. No, it was added because of the transgressions. The law, we weren't under the law. The law came when Adam transgressed and Eve transgressed against God. Before there, we were, there was no law, so there was no sin. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a meditator, mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Question mark. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness, which means seriously righteousness, should have been by the law. But it's not. But the scripture hath concluded all are under sin. All of us. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ and what he did might be given to them that believe in him. But before faith came in Jesus, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. After the workings of the law. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So the law was there to get us to Christ. And then once we were to Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ. So no longer the law. The law was just to get us to Christ. And then once Christ came, then his faith and what he did in it will save us from there on out. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, which is faith, or I mean, which is the law. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under the law. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, not by the sins you commit and that forgiveness you get. Well, yeah, actually, the abundance of grace is how God gives grace upon who he gives grace, he told Moses. I have mercy upon whom I have had mercy, and I give grace upon whom I give grace. Blessed is he whose much sins are forgiven and covered. Blessed is he, because I choose, God says, to cover your sins with the righteous blood of Jesus. Multitudes of them. Because he will have more grace upon whom he needs to have more grace upon, and to whom is stronger sometimes in the spirit and don't and they don't have as much trouble committing sin, won't need as much grace. But he that is forgiven much is more thankful is more thankful to the person that forgive him than he that is forgiven little. You remember that. He who needs a whole bunch of forgiveness 
once he's forgiven for all those mistakes, will love that person much more than the person who don't need forgiven that much of anything. Because, how imagine knowing you're going to die, right? You're going to go, we're all going to hell. Because of all the sin that we can't help but commit because of how weak we are in the flesh. In the spirit, we're strong mentally in Christ, but in the flesh, we're weak. But Jesus came because of God giving his only begotten son and died so that he could take on the curse of the law and all the sin for us and free us from it when he died on the cross. And when he rose again, we rose with him, spiritually minded, in faith in Jesus Christ. So he forgive us for all the sin we committed. So that's why we love him, because we realize what he did for us and how much he's forgiven us. And that we aren't under the curse of the law no more. And even when we accidentally sin because how weak we are in the flesh, it is no longer us that do it, but the sin that liveth in us. Don't condemn yourself. Ask for forgiveness and keep trying again. And know that we aren't, we aren't saved and made righteous under that law no more. We are made righteous under believing in Jesus Christ only. Okay. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Therefore, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So no, God no longer sees us when we accept Christ in ours. He don't see us in all the sin and how weak our flesh is. He only sees his son, Jesus. He never sees any of us. He sees Jesus and his blood covering us. Therefore, is, there is neither Jew nor Greek anymore. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So when God looks upon you, he don't see a man. He don't see a woman. He don't see a sinner. He don't see a free person. He sees his son Jesus. And that's it. Period. So that's why it's so important that you need to believe in Jesus. Okay? Because we are so weak that we can't do it without him. We are going to sin and keep sinning. Even if you think of a sin and don't commit it, you've already broke, you've already sinned because you thought it in your heart. There's no way around it. It's a curse because there ain't no way out of it. You have to take Jesus. He is the only way out of it. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Chapter 4. Now I say that the hearer, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors unto the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, Jesus made of a woman, un made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Thank you, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God un through Christ, how be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods, lowercase g. But now, after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days. In months, and times, and years, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you the labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. You have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first, and my temptation which was in my flesh Ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me 
as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Wherefore is then the blessedness ye bespake of? Question mark. For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked your eyes out and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy, enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well, yeah. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But if it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only where I am present with you, my little children of whom I travail, and birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell ye, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham, that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondsmaid and the other by a free woman. So one is under bondage and one is free. Two sons. But the but he who was the bondswoman, the one that's a slave in bondage, was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are in an allegory? For these are the two covenants. The one from this Mount Sinai, which jit, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. So, the Mount Sinai was the law that God gave to Moses. And it is to bondage. For the Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage, with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren, and that bearest not. Break forth and cry, that the, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, and Isaac was our the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, that saith the scripture, question mark, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heirs of the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondswoman, but of the free. So we are free. We are no longer under the law. No longer. We are saved and we live in the mind of Christ, spiritually. We live in our thoughts. We know and we are addicted to studying God's word. It changes your way of thinking, your whole way of thinking. You get addicted to God's word. You want to study and do all you can for God. And all you do, want to do is talk about God. And that's what you're saved. By the faith in your mind, knowing that no matter what the, the weak flesh does, we are not saved through the flesh. We are saved spiritually through the faith in Jesus Christ. So we live in our mind. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free.